If being a Jujutsu sorcerer is like running a marathon, what if all that's at the end of that road is a mountain of our fellow sorcerer's corpses? In the series of Jujutsu Kaisen, Nanami Kento is the model grade 1 sorcerer for all to aspire toward becoming. He's a stoic, duty-driven, and intelligent man. And not only that, he's one who's strong enough to handle himself against all opponents and has a chance to defeat most under specific circumstances due to his ratio technique. When we're first introduced to Nanami in the series, he's introduced as a mentor to the protagonist, Yuji Tadori, and he expresses to Yuji that he became a Jujutsu Sorcerer because he believes that Jujutsu Sorcerers are idiots and that working in an office is idiotic, so he decided to choose the lesser of two evils. This is further explained in a flashback when he's at death's door. Nanami reiterates his disdain for Jujutsu Sorcerers and says that he originally ran away from this profession due to having to force his comrades to accept sacrificing their own lives for the sake of others. This most likely refers to his traumatic loss of Yuhaibara. This loss due to the information on the curse that him and Haibara were facing provided by Jujutsu Tet. This loss that made both him and Geto wonder why they even served this profession in the first place. Wondering if all they can do is simply struggle until they're expended no matter how much the weight of loss burdens them. Haibara's death shook both Geto and Nanami to their cores and haunted them until they both departed Jujutsu High. Interestingly enough, Gege has stated that when Nanami heard the path that Geto took when becoming a cursed user, Nanami was able to understand why Geto would go down this path, although he doesn't agree with it. As the sacrifice of others is the primary reason that Nanami hates being a sorcerer, it's likely that he's had the same thoughts run across him that Geto had after Hibara's passing, and thus he understands. This could have also played a role in him defecting from Jujutsu society for the first time, as Geto's departure likely affected Nanami as well. I think where the two differed was that Nanami still cared for the people around him and had no reason to personally hate the non-sorcerers such as Geto did. Whereas Nanami was facing the meaningless death of sorcerers, Geto was facing the mockery and disrespect that was made of that same meaningless death made by the non-sorcerers. As we enter the aforementioned flashback, Nanami's at a bakery to pick up food on his way to work, and as he gets food from the baker, he sees a cursed spirit on his shoulder, and chooses to ignore it since it's pretty weak, and eliminating it would make him look pretty weird since he's the only one who can see it. So when it came down to it, Nanami just went on with his day. At his job, Nanami points out that what he's doing is pointless, making his clients buy garbage stocks with no potential to grow, essentially being a metaphor for his job here. He spent two years here and has not made any difference in anybody's life despite that, but that wasn't really his goal at this point either. I've never been the type of guy who worries about the meaning of his life or his purpose on earth. I'll make enough money to retire by 40 and move to a country where it's cheap to live for the rest of my life. It's been four years since I've left Jujutsu High. The whole time, all I've thought about is money. I don't need to deal with curses or people as long as I have money, 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 money. As an enemy exhausts himself more and more throughout the day, it's shown that he's slowly getting deeper into his thoughts and the reason behind his current way of life. And at the end of the day, we're shown a hint of truth behind his current actions. It's communicated that Nanami does not want money for the sake of money, material possession, his family, friends, or anything like that. He just wants the money to no longer have to deal with curses or people. He simply does not want the stress or trauma that Jujutsu High has bestowed upon him after all his time working as a sorcerer and dealing with curses. Ironically, this goal exhausts him more than dealing with curses and people in the first place, and is so exhausting to him that he feels the need to study and affirm his goal to himself in order to get through this day. I think at the end of the day, Nanami simply wants peace, and this peace includes not having to take on anybody else's burden. But does this include freeing himself of the ones he's held on to? After concluding this day of work, Nanami heads back into the bakery and explains how his job does not really matter in comparison to the baker's job, yet he earns much more. All he does is make the rich richer, whereas the baker allows almost all people to be able to feed themselves. And once he states that this is no more than ridiculous, he finally swats away the flyhead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please come again. I thought I had nothing to live for. Nanami through his quick rant at the bakery came to remember the value of a jujutsu sorcerer in the first place. 
this meaningless marathon seems to affect more people than he once believed. Although a baker's time will eventually come to an end, and someone else will bake for their community, it doesn't change the fact that the baker has made a huge difference in the lives of many by simply doing their job, whether or not it's heavily valued by society. Through her, Nanami remembers and understands that the purpose of a Jujutsu sorcerer transcends himself, and when he was living to find peace for himself and himself alone, he was miserable and exhausted. But now that Nanami works for the peace and protection of others, he seems to be better, and even well enough to declare that he had no regrets when he first believed that he was going to pass away. Interestingly enough, I believe Nanami's overtime technique plays a role in communicating how much Nanami valued this purpose of his. Nanami worked himself to the bone as a salesman, even knocking out on his work chair. Whereas the Nanami that works as a Jujutsu sorcerer refuses to work overtime, and will do anything possible to finish his job as soon as possible on the off chance that he does. This displays that Nanami not only values his time, but his health as well as a sorcerer. I'll even take a guess here and say that Nanami does this because he intends on being a sorcerer for a long time rather than exhausting himself so he can retire early like he wanted to when he was a salesman. Nanami needs to preserve himself and remain healthy, so he can continue to protect those around him much longer. Maybe this is why Nanami was never able to create a domain expansion either. As a domain is a representation of obtaining self-actualization, Nanami was always so focused on others that he likely never took the time to understand himself, and thus never unlocked this ability. Nanami understands the importance of his job although it's a meaningless marathon for him and his co-workers, and all it took for him to realize this was a thank you. This is in stark contrast to Suguru Geto, who abandoned non sorcerers and came to despise them due to them mocking him at his lowest moment of his life. Where Nanami was shown the best of humanity, Geto was shown the worst of it, and I believe that this is why Nanami was made to be present upon Geto seeing Haibara's body, because both of their lives were defined by this moment. And so were the decisions they come to choose later on in their paths as sorcerers. With all that said, I believe that this is why Nanami became a Jujutsu sorcerer again, despite telling Yuji that he thinks very low of the profession. Nanami was able to find a transcendent purpose through understanding the importance of a job like his, and hasn't looked back. To me, this is very powerful, as this is something a lot of people could relate to. Something else that stands out about Nanami is his kindness. This kindness that seems to be in contrast to the stoic demeanor that he tends to show. Despite living such a rough life, he never fails to display his kindness at any opportunity given in his life. He wouldn't lie to his co-worker about the job, deflecting the baker's questions about his well-being but instead choosing to ask about hers, him expressing shock and disbelief when he saw Yuji on the ground after their fight with Mahito, trying his best to prompt Yuji into getting back up and him not wanting Yuji to become a sorcerer in the first place, not because of any political reasons like everybody else had, but only because he wants children to be children. This kindness that Nanami has shown and continuously developed due to his deeds has resulted in him becoming a man who prioritizes saving others and shielding their burdens, not only physically, but emotionally as well. As Nanami was even so emotionally intelligent, he made the decision to not tell Yuji about the truth behind the death of Junpei's mother. Nanami understands how important it is to display kindness to others no matter the circumstances and always tries his best to do so. This being a testament to not only his intelligence but his fortitude. The fortitude to continue being kind to others despite the life he's lived and the circumstances that he must deal with. I do believe that this is a trait that Nanami has always had even before the infectious charisma that Haibara always displayed around Nanami but he most likely sees the importance of displaying this kindness through his loss of Haibara. It's just a guess from here on, but Haibara's charisma heavily contrasted and balanced Nanami's pessimism when they were partners. So without Haibara, Nanami likely had to find a way to get through missions without him. So maybe he chose to cope with this by displaying kindness and empathy whenever he could. Who knows? In contrast to Nanami's kindness is of course his anger and apathy. This is only shown when he faces Harut after finding that Ichiji was injured by him, and as he even says, I never have and never will be frustrated by my own uselessness. I'm just, in the face of the evils of this world, I'm just, how dare they. As Ichiji's seemingly dead body reminds Nanami of Haibara, he snaps. Nanami cannot even find the words to express his anger towards the loss of Ichiji. He simply states, how dare they. 
and although this is such a tiny line that I can honestly be overanalyzing, Nanami seems to take this attack on Ichiji as the greatest personal offense that we've seen done to him, as if Haruta committed the worst act imaginable. And this is further reinforced by how Nanami completely decimates Haruta on sight without much said. Of course, after confirming that he was the one who committed the vile act of harming Ichiji. Hybara is without a doubt the reason Nanami has the adults protect children mentality. And since Yuji and Hybara are quite similar, it's very likely that this is one of the reasons that Nanami took a liking to Yuji. As Hybara was a sorcerer that had their youth stolen, it would break Nanami's heart to see a repeat of this happening to someone that resembles Hybara's compassion. What makes me believe that Hybara played a role in increasing Nanami's empathy towards Yuji and those around him, of course, is his final outing in the series. When Nanami is about to be eliminated by Mahito, he asks Hybara, what the hell was I trying to do anyway? I ran, and even though I ran away, I came back with the vague reason of finding this work worthwhile. Nanami then sees Hybara point towards something, and when he turns around, he sees Yuji. Nanami calls his reason for returning to work vague, yet in truth, it was so easy to define, it needed no words. Nanami understood his purpose as a sorcerer, to eliminate all curses for the sake of protecting those who could not protect themselves, but he asks, why did he return to do this in the first place? Hybara's presence is the answer to this question. From Hybara's kindness, selflessness as a sorcerer, and even the loss of Hybara himself, I believe that this manifestation of Hybara is meant to represent every single reason why Nanami brought himself back into this marathon despite his initial departure from it. At the end of it all, he tells Hybara that he cannot say what he just thought to Yuji, as he does not want to curse him. As he thinks of the well-being of others to the very last second of his life, he gives Yuji his final seal of approval as a mentor and a well-needed push at the same time by simply saying, you've got it from here, and is eliminated by Mahito. As Nanami's outing was perfect in terms of wrapping his character up, I do believe that it has in-story ramifications by still leaving Yuji with a curse, despite him doing his best not to do so. It does seem as if these last words play a role in Yuji feeling as if he's a cog in the machine, will stop at nothing to eliminate all curses, but it's also been displayed that these same words have pushed Yuji to continue living no matter what. So we'll have to see where Yuji's character ends up to finally wrap the bow on Nanami's character as well. Nanami was a selfless and kind sorcerer who never wanted to experience the loss he once did with the loss of his best friend, and instead caused another to experience this loss. This represents the endless marathon that sorcerers will always be running, Although each sorcerer has their own lap to run, they will always continue to pass the baton to the next for as long as curses exist. And I firmly believe that Yuji Tadori will be the one to run that final lap. Because as Nanami once said, you've got it from here. I want to say that what people can take from Nanami is to do your best to be kind to others no matter what's happened to you or what's going on around you. I know that using Nanami's popularity as a character is probably not the best argument but I will say that I believe many people find Nanami to be so respectable due to this key trait of his. What Nanami values is the youth of those younger than him, the protection of those weaker than him, and the happiness of those around him before anything relating to himself. And by doing this, he's affected so many characters' lives in the story for the better, and his legacy has lasted beyond himself due to this. He's as selfless, yet strong and stoic as it gets, and these type of masculine figures in media tend to be very popular for a reason. Everybody aspires to be like these people. Nanami is someone who took one of the worst moments in his life and used it as a reason to become much better, and he brought so much good to the world by doing so. At the end of it all, all we can hope for is Yuji to complete his last mission.